Thanks, everybody. Um, let's continue with uh, chapter eight, thermal analysis. Uh, this one is series four. Um, I have uh, my lectures, my pages, and uh, the last series we talk about uh, the thermal resistance network. Let's take a look at uh, some examples. Problem 8.23, a silicon chip 4 by 4 by 0 0.3 millimeter, millimeter thick is soldered to a ceramic circuit card that is bound to a cold plate, as shown in figure E 8.23. The surface temperature of the cold plate is uh, maintained at 20 degrees Celsius. It means the temperature of the junctions on the ship as a function of the heat dissipated. Consider the range from 1 to 10 watts. Okay. Look at our system. We have our ship um, bonded to our alumina 96%. Um, with the uh, eutectic solder with uh, the thickness 5 mil and also uh, aluminum board um, is bonded to uh, the cloth plate with the uh, epoxy with the thickness 5 mil and uh, the cloth plate, plate is maintained uh, with the temperature 20 degrees Celsius On our table of equal three, you can get uh, the thermal conductivity of our silicon. Uh, thermal conductivity of our eutectic, this one is cold. And uh, the thermal conductivity of aluminum, 96%. And uh, thermal conductivity of our epoxy. You can do uh, the thermal resistant network drawing. Um, they all lower, first of all, the temperatures, the uh, heat to flow from the higher temperature that's considered to be your inner uh, system out of uh, the system to the cold plate, which is maintained uh, the temperature 20 degree uh, Celsius. They are all in uh, series. So, uh, you or heat you transfer uh, throughout of the system. And uh, I have a RTC, which stands for ship. E stands for uh, eutectic. AL stands for alumina. And uh, E stands for epoxy. First step is to find uh, thermal resistance. For RTC or ship, you have uh, the ship thickness 0 0.3 millimeter, and you put uh, 10 to a negative third the meter. And you have K, and that's your area is 4 by 4 millimeter square. For RTE, the thickness is uh, by a millimeter. Uh, five mil, sorry, and uh, you know one mil equal to one over one thousand inch, and uh, the next one is the for alumina, and uh, the last one is for uh, epoxy. I do a summarization uh, for this one's components: silica chip, eutectic bond, alumina ninety six percent, epoxy symbol. RTC, RTE, RTL, RTE. And uh, this is the thermal resistance. And uh, the lowest one is the eutectic bond because it's made from gold. And the highest one is the epoxy, 3.67. The total, or our total, which are in series, you just 
at the all thermal resistance up. We have our 7.01 degrees Celsius per watt. From our thermal resistance network, we can see a lot of equations that you look for, uh, you know, the uh, ship, the temperature of the ship or inner, inner system. That would be your higher than T0 at the cold plate. That's our 20 degrees Celsius. You have our TC minus the T or CE or the junction, the temperature between our, what the ship and the eutectic bond that's equal to QRTC. And you already have our RTC. And uh, you have our junction temperature between our, the ship and uh, you take the uh, minus the junction temperature between uh, eutectic and alumina, 96%, that's equal to QRTE. You can work this out. If you are add all equations together, you know that your TCE will cancel route, your TEL will cancel route, and uh, TALE will uh, cancel route. What do you have left? Is there TC minus T0 going to be equal to Q? That's common term of the total or thermal resistance of the system, which are in series. Or you have equation that TC equal to 20 plus the 7.01 Q. That's the give you a linear plot with the slope of what? 7.01. So I just chose uh, just some points. This one is not scale. At the uh, one watt, we have our TC uh, 27.1. At 10 watts, we have our TC 90.1. Public A plus 6, conduction in our circuit cards. Uh, there are two type of our uh, Thermal transfer. One is that uh, along the planes of the circuit or uh, along in parallel with the PCB. And the second one is that uh, heat transfer perpendicular to uh, the plane of uh, the circuit board. Let's take a look at the first one. Conduction in the plane of the circuit. You have a insulated or size of uh, this uh, PCB. So uh, the heat will flow from the left to the right, you know, along the circuit board. And uh, let's take this one T0 and this one is T. So uh, the heat will flow from higher temperature to the lower one. So T is going to be higher than T0. And uh, for uh, thermal resistance, our thermal conductivity of uh, E proxy, that's the 0 0.26 watt per meter degree Celsius. And you just plug in number, you have a uh, RT. That's the very high, as you can see. Now, uh, the Reduction to uh, the thickness of the circuit board. Um, your thickness turned out to be L at this point. That's one um, millimeter. And uh, that's if you are RT equal to 6.15, much, much lower than uh, you know, RT in terms of conduction in the plane of uh, the circuit. Let's take a look at multi-layer circuit boards with copper planes. In the system, we have our multi-layer uh, circuit boards. Um, we have uh, five of them. And then uh, between uh, the circuit boards, there's the layer of our copper. So we have uh, four layers uh, of copper. 
same. The heat flow, flowing uh, from the left to the right, and uh, at one end, you have uh, the lower temperature is T0 and the higher one is T. You can uh, draw the thermal resistance network so they are all in uh, parallel. You have our RTB, you have five uh, RTB in uh, five layers of our, uh, circuit boards and four layers of our copper. The total, or let's consider uh, the total thermal resistance of uh, the circuit board. Because you have five layers, so uh, the total um, of your thermal resistance of the circuit board is going to be RTB over five, and that's the RTC over four, because you have four layers of copper. For RT effective or total thermal resistance of the system here, um, you simply do a um, total R in parallel, right? You know that R total equal to R1 by R2 and divided by R1 plus R2. And uh, in this case, you have RTB over 5 uh, multiplied by RTC over 4 and then uh, divided by RTB over 5 plus RTC over 4. <coughs> Sorry. Now uh, let's take a look at our PCB with wheels. Sometimes uh, you drill holes so you can make a you know communication uh, between the layers. And you can, uh, um, in, the, in this case, you can uh, get the uh, much, much lower uh, thermal resistance of the uh, system that are what, are what you are looking for. And uh, also, uh, you can put uh, so many uh, components, you know, in the system. Um, you have a circuit board, 25 by 25 millimeter. And you have our 10 wheels and wheels uh, uh, have a shape like cylindrical. And then uh, with uh, the radius of 0 0.5 millimeter with uh, the thickness 1 millimeter and KV does equal to 50 watt per meter degree Celsius. For thermal resistant network, it's going to be like this picture. We have our RT fear of 100 of them in parallel with our RTB with wear. So your T effective is going to be RT fear uh, by RTB of the fear and then uh, divided by RT fear uh, plus RTB with fear. Let's take a look one uh, fear uh, in the term of a thermal resistance. R equal to L over Ka, you L, uh, this one is thickness, uh, one millimeter. And then uh, the area, uh, the cross section area, that's the pi R squared. And your R is 0 0.5, and uh, you convert to a meter square by uh, multiply uh, 10 to uh, negative 6. But you have uh, 100 of them in parallel. So uh, you are to fear for 100 of them is going to be 25 by uh, 46 divided by 100. Let's give you a 0 0.254. Now uh, for the circuit board, you apply R equal to L over Ka, but your A is the become uh, you know smaller up uh, because uh, one of them you reserve for here so you need to uh, subtract a uh, by uh, a of years 100 of them l still the same one millimeter 
and your k is 0 0.26 in uh, the circuit board with our veer that's the 25 by 25 and uh, this is the total area of uh, 100 veer that's uh, 100 pi r square so this is your tp this veer then uh, your rt effective uh, become rt veer multiplied by rtp of veer divided by rt veer plus rtp of veer and uh, you have a 0 0.245 compare uh, rt for pcv with uh, veer and without veers no veer you have a 6.15 uh, with V, that's the 0 0.2 or 0.45, you have like 25 um, less. So that's a benefit uh, when you are introduced, you know, V to your system. A for 6 by 3, conduction cooling with a uh, heat frame. Well, take a look at the system. You have uh, a chips. Carrier, and you have clamp just like heat sink to transfer heat out of the system. And your ship carrier is attached to a multi layer circuit board. Mm, sorry, and uh, also a multi layer circuit board attached to a copper heat frame with uh, epoxy adhesive. Take a look at the top view. You have our uh, eight chips, A1 through uh, A8. And this one is the kind of rear. The circuit board have the width of uh, 100 millimeter with the thickness uh, one uh, millimeter. So this one uh, we would reserve for the camera rear with uh, the width of 10. And uh, you can see uh, the picture here. Okay, this is your clamp. So uh, it took some sp space. And uh, the section of uh, your chip is the separate by partitions. That's the width, the width seven point five millimeter. Um, you can uh, do a thermal resistant network of the model. It's going to be like this. So uh, for the chip number one, you will have a test that will dissipate heat to one, and then uh, through RA, and then uh, heat transfer will uh, transfer along our IF, that's the heat frame copper. And this one become RF1 because the, the width uh, of this part is different. This one is 10, but this one is 7.5. So that's why uh, we have RF1 here. And the last one is the RC, is the thermal resistance of the clamp or the heat sink. As you can see here, you have our uh, chips. The heat, uh, finally, the heat will uh, flow uh, from the left to the right. And uh, let's look at RA. Um, for RA, you pick up a uh, chip. That's mean uh, the heat transfer is the uh, transfer from the top to the bottom. Okay. And then uh, you have a chip on board, and uh, the board is attached to a heat frame by epoxy adhesive. Uh, that's represented by uh, EP. This one is the thermal resistant network. You have RB, you have REP, you have RCU are perpendicular. That's, uh, they all are in series. And we will put our A 
equal to RB uh, plus REP plus RCU perpendicular. So uh, what you need to work out is just uh, do a calculation for thermal resistance. The first one is the, the board, uh, thermal resistance, the circuit board, uh, B. The board thickness is the 2 millimeter, the cross section area is the 750 millimeter square. And uh, this one we're going to apply board with the uh, gears uh, by applying RTE from equation 6.6. .6. Sorry, x point six four that we worked out before. So your R B equal to become R does become R T effective, and then uh, multiply by two. Where is two from? Well, uh, there's some change. Sorry, uh, the thickness now is become two millimeters. You know, uh, not one. Sorry. And the area turned out to be uh, from uh, twenty five by twenty five. That's going to be uh, seven hundred fifty millimeters square. Or R equal to L over KA, your A change, so you need to get rid of 25 by 25. Okay, because you are looking for the area of 750, so you divide it by 750. Just do the short calculation from RTE that you are worked out before. And two is because it's the, the thickness changed from one millimeter to be your two millimeter. And this is your RP. For uh, epoxy thermal resistance, epoxy has the thickness 0.125 millimeter and KEP equal to two watt per meter degree Celsius. This is your uh, EP. Straightforward calculation. I see you perpendicular. There's some point that we have to work uh, play out. Um, for the system, when uh, you have the heat flowing from the top to the bottom, when it's hit, the copper frame uh, is going to uh, transfer the heat from the left to the right, or to the lower temperature, or out. Uh, of the system. So uh, the thickness that you need to apply here is just going to be the half of the uh, copper heat frame thickness. In this case, the, the copper frame uh, thickness is one millimeter. So you need to use the thickness 0.5 or your L to be your 0.5 millimeter. This is your RCU, RCU or perpendicular. That's very low. Finally, you have our RA equal to RB plus REP plus RCU perpendicular. That's the 0 0.4 by 4 degrees Celsius per watt. Now your RF, the thickness, the, uh, sorry, now RF, you need to consider uh, the heat flowing from the left to the right, not uh, from the top to the bottom anymore. So your L, of uh, when you calculate for RF, you need to use the L to be uh, 7.5 millimeter, and the cross section area is going to be the width multiplied by the thickness of the circuit board. In this case, it's the 2 by 100 millimeter. Let's take a look at RF. Uh, sorry, um, the thickness is 1 millimeter. Um, this has become your RF. You use the K of a copper, 381. And RF1, we use the RF1 um, right here because the, this one, uh, L, turned out to be uh, 10, mill 10 millimeters. That's why you use the RF1. Sorry. Uh, L is 18 uh, plus 75. Where does the number from? Well, you take a look at this one. For our F1, you need cramp, take over uh, the half 
of space of this uh, section. So uh, you have five here, and you have ten. So that's make uh, fourteen, right? And the ship is at the center of the section. So uh, the you need to add what seven point five divided by two. So uh, UL for uh, our F1 calculation, that's going to be uh, 10 plus 5 plus 7.5 divided by 2. That's why you have our 18.75 millimeters for L. So this is your RF. You do the same thing, you just pick up RF and you do the ratio. Uh, you get rid of what? Um, because R equal to L over KA, your L is different now. So you need to uh, um, divide it by 70.5 first, because for your RF, you have 70.5 here, and then uh, you just uh, multiply by 18.75 to get our RF1. Okay? Of course, that's number is going to be higher than RF because you have a, a larger L, 18.75, instead of 7.5, right? What the heat sink? Is there the heat transfer by convection? You are C, going to be 1 over HCA. And the area of the heat sink is given is as the 10 by 100 uh, millimeters square, or 10 to the third. And this is your SC. You have RC equal to 0 0.1. That's very low. Well, we're now we're, the next step is to do calculation for a junction temperature T1 through T17. For T1, you take a look back to a thermal resistance network again. T1 minus T0, you know that our delta T equal to QRT. You know this is RT is RC. What about Q? <laughs> there are Q is the accumulate, accumulates. You have Q1 plus Q2 through uh, Q8, you add them up, right? Because our the heat you are add up. And uh, if the heat or Q they are all equal, Q1 equal to Q2 equal to Q3 equal to or Q8 equal to 1 watt. Just put this one. T1 become HRC plus T0. And your RC is 0 pay 1. That's, you already put that out. And then plus 20. Let's give you a 20.8 for T1. Uh, what about T2? So you apply delta T equal to, uh, this is your T2 and T1. Delta T or T2 minus T1, that's equal to QRF1. And your Q still become a Q1 through a Q8. Add up. Okay, you probably uh, have idea of what uh, I'm doing. Now uh, let's take a look at T3. Go back to our thermal resistance over again. For T3, you have a T3 minus T2 equal to our QRF, not RF1 anymore, this one is RF. But Q, you not include Q8, so you have a Q1 to or Q7 add up only. That's why I have a QR3 equal to QRF, that's the plus T2. This is your T2. You do the same for T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, and T9. For T9, um, the most left. T9 minus T8, that's going to be your Q1 RF, right? You have only Q1. 
So that's why I have her deny, uh, become her IS plus T8. Now, uh, what about T10? Well, uh, you know that T10 minus T2, that's equal to uh, Q8 RA. And T11 minus T3 equal to uh, Q7 RA. You already know uh, T2, T3 to uh, T9. So you can work out for the rest of temp the junction temperature. So your T10 is going to be your QRA plus T2. Um, this one has become a T8, right? Um, also for T11, it's going to be a Q7 RA. Okay, you can work out for the rest. Let's take a look at the problem 8.32. If the heat input to each segment of the thermal model shown in figure 8.29 is Q1 equal to 1 watt, Q2 equal to 1.2 watt, Q3 equal to 1.4 watt, Q4 equal to 1.6 watt, Q5 equal to 1.8. Uh, let's say they are not equal. It's not one watt, you know, anymore. Do the same thing. Determine the temperature T1 to T17. However, you just need to uh, work more because the T1 not equal to Q2, not equal to Q3, not equal to Q8. You just add them up, you know. Uh, it's not the typical steps where you were to do it. Okay, so uh, this one is our uh, finish our uh, thermal analysis there or uh, chapter eight in the book. This one is series four. You see in the next series, series five. Okay.